The topic of this video is graphing transformation techniques, horizontal shrinking and stretching. To shrink a graph towards the y-axis, replace each x in its equation with ax in parentheses, where a is some real number greater than zero. So to stretch a graph away from the y-axis, replace each x in its equation with ax in parentheses, where a is a real number between zero and one. When a graph stretches away from the y-axis, every point that is not already on the y-axis moves away from it. When a graph shrinks towards the y-axis, every point that is not already on the y-axis moves towards it. When you horizontally shrink or stretch a graph, you divide each x-coordinate by a. Okay, let's give a visual on what I mean by horizontal shrinking and stretching. So I want you to imagine that my two hands are holding a graph. So a horizontal stretch would be if I pulled the graph like this, where all of the points are getting farther and farther away from the y-axis. And then if I were to shrink horizontally, I'm going to allow that tension to release, and all of the points are moving horizontally towards the y-axis. All right, let's look at an example. So we are asked to create the graphs of f of x equals x cubed, g of x equals 2x in parentheses cubed, and h of x equals half x in parentheses cubed. All right, so let's go ahead and do that little by little by little here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this table of points a little more clearly here. All right. So the first thing you want to recognize is we're being asked to first create the graph of f of x equals x cubed. That's one of our basic functions. That's one of our library functions. And you should know that from memory. So these right here are the two columns of the table for the black function f of x equals x cubed. These are the x coordinates and these are the y coordinates. And by now I hope you understand the relationship between the two. x is the input. The action is cube, so if you cube negative 2, you get negative 8. If you cube negative 1, you get negative 1, and so on and so on down the table. And we can create the graph of the cube function using the techniques we've learned earlier in previous videos. And so this black curve right here is our cube function, f of x equals x cubed. This is where we're going to begin our process. All right, so now we're going to turn our attention to the next graph, g of x, the red graph. And we notice that f of x and g of x are different because of the 2. Now, that 2 is inside close to x. That means that the x was replaced with ax in parentheses, where the value of a is 2. This is indicative of a horizontal stretch or shrink. And because the value of a is greater than 1, that makes it a shrink. Okay, so what do we do with a shrink? In fact, what do we do with uh, any stretch or shrink? And that would, uh, any horizontal stretch or shrink. And that would be we would divide the x coordinate by a, where a is that number that we were talking about, right? I said ax, for this case, for this problem, it's 2. So we divide all of the x coordinates by 2. The y coordinates do not change. So we can see that shown here with this red arrow where it says divide by 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half. 0 divided by 2 is 0. 1 divided by 2 is a half. 2 divided by 2 is 1. The y coordinates do not change. So these middle two columns here and here represent the x and y associated with the graph g of x equals 2x cubed. And if we plot those points, for example, 0, 0, half 1, and 1, 8, here's what we're going to see. So here's 0, 0, here's half 1, and you can see what's going on here as we go from the black curve to the red curve. All of the points from the black curve are moving horizontally towards the y-axis. And that's true even down here where they're moving to the right. So the black dot is moving to the right towards the y-axis. This black dot is moving towards the left towards the y-axis. And that's the key to pay attention to. 
the points, all of the points are moving towards the y-axis. Okay, and that finally brings us to our third graph, h of x. So h of x is equal to half x in parentheses cubed. And once again, we notice that when we compare f of x equals x cubed and h of x equals half x cubed, that the difference is the half and the parentheses. So whenever you replace x with ax in parentheses, you're dealing with a horizontal stretch or shrink. The value of a for this problem is 1 half. So how does that affect our table of points? Once again, we refer to this last sentence. When you horizontally stretch or shrink, divide each x coordinate by a. So we have to take all of the x's from our parent function, from our basic function, from our library function, and we have to divide them by 1 half. Now this is where it becomes very handy to have a firm, solid understanding of how fractions work. So, if you've ever played around with fractions, you might have noticed that when you divide by 1 half, it is the same as multiplying by 2. So what we're going to see here is, even though I'm going to write it as divide the x's by 1 half, the result is going to be that all of the x's are in fact being doubled. And this is an important distinction. When we talk about it, we use the language divide by 1 half. But when we actually do the math, we think about it as multiplying by 2. So negative 2 divided by a half is negative 4. Or the way you might think about it in your head is negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So the negative 1 becomes a negative 2. The 0 is a 0. The 1 is a 2. The 2 is a 4 and the y's don't change. So we get this pair of columns to represent the points on our blue curve. These are the x-coordinates, these are the y-coordinates. And so when we go to graph that, we see that our graph contains points like these, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 0, and 2, 1. Let's look at those. So uh, let's see here, there's the 0, 0 on our blue curve. Uh, let's see, 2, 1 is right here. Uh, negative 2, negative 1 is right here, and we observe exactly what we were expecting. The points from the black curve are stretching away from the y-axis. Notice this is moving to the left, away from the y-axis, and this is moving to the right, away from the y-axis. That's the common pattern here, movement towards or away from the y-axis. Okay, great. So let's, uh, let's put some things together here. I would like to point out to you what's in this big blue box. You might have noticed that the vertical stretch, vertical, right? We've been talking about horizontal for a while. I'm now talking about vertical, which was the previous video. You might have noticed that a vertical stretch is associated with a greater than one and vertical shrink is associated with uh, a between zero and one, which makes sense but a horizontal stretch is associated with a being between zero and one, like a half or a third, and a horizontal shrink is associated with a is greater than one, which is backwards of what we might expect. This brings us to an extremely important point. The translations horizontal shift, horizontal stretch, and horizontal shrink all feel backwards. Keep this in mind when solving these types of problems. And now that I say this out loud, this should say transformations and not translations. So I'm going to say that again. The transformations, horizontal shift, horizontal stretch, and horizontal shrink all feel backwards. So keep this in mind when solving problems of that type.